moving on to the next. I mean, we are rock, rocking and rolling, running on time here. So what I'm going to do is start inviting our next guest to come in. Um, so let's go ahead and bring them on. I'll be moderating this next panel here. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be talking about sleeper bourbons, the most underrated bourbons that are on the shelf right now. So I'm joined by two of these great gentlemen right here. And I, I see I see Jay down here. He is he is just chilling in his uh, in his little bourbon nook over here. How's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? Doing well. So I want to give you all an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself, uh, let people know where they can find you and and how they can learn more about you. Yeah. So um, I'm Jay. I'm the founder and creator of Take That Review. I review whiskey and spirits. Um, and you've probably also seen me on Reddit. Um, that's primarily where I'm focused. So You've probably heard of me uh, previously on the Bourbon Pursuit podcast about Reddit and social, um, and I'm here to talk about some sleeper bourbons. Yeah, we actually get you uh, showing your face for once, right? No more anonymous. First time, first time, so get used to it. I cut my hair. I shouldn't be as ugly as I was, but no promises it'll get any better. You found a barber during COVID? I did it myself. <laughs> there you go. Which was risky. It was super risky. <laughs> and, and John, what about you? Have you had to find a barber yet? I know it's a it's a it's a it's a bad it's myself joke. in the shower here. Yeah, but I'm I'm pretty good. I I do want to thank you, Kenny, for babysitting us, and I apologize that we did not have a presentation ready to go for for this uh panel. I feel kind of ill prepared. No, there's no presentation. Like I said, this could be just a fun discussion because really, what I want to do is I I kind of want to like bring in really uh, different viewpoints of what people look at as some of the best bourbons that are available on the shelf today. Uh, and so, John, I also want you to get a plug for Dad's Drinking Bourbon as well, where people can find you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we are on Dad's Drinking Bourbon. We are also a podcast like Bourbon Pursuit, uh, another great podcast. We can be found wherever you download your podcast. We are on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, because Dad's Drinking Bourbon is too long. And you can find us hanging around people's houses drinking whiskey. Fantastic. And we got our, our late join here. I was I was worried it wasn't going to happen, but we got James. James runs the bourbon enthusiast on Instagram. How you doing? Good. How's everybody doing? I'm doing well. I, I Tell me, is that a virtual background or are you actually in your bunker right now? This just happens to be a random room. You know, I decided to set up and I mean, how's it look? I, I'd say I'd say you're going to get some mouse watering today. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> yeah, to be here, guys. You blew me out of the water. <laughs> hey, he's blowing us all out of the water right now. I was like, I just got my my little baby shelf right here that I use in in my quote unquote recording studio, quote unquote office, whatever it is. It seems the problem like is I'm too spot. fat. I block my bottles. <laughs> so if I were to lift this up, I at least have something back there. But I am a I'm a big guy. It's all right. Well, cool. Well, let's go ahead and let's get into this. So what we're gonna be doing is call, again talking about the. The bottles that are on shelves today that people may or may not overlook. Um, I don't want to talk about stuff that used to be on the shelves like Elmer T. Lee and Rock Hill Farms and all this other kind of stuff that we would use, we used to be able to say like, hell yeah, that's a great $35 bourbon. And now it's like, well, that's $35 that are now it's doubled if you ever find it. And yeah, the second part is if you ever find it. So the first one I'm going to throw your all's way and uh, Jay, I'll let you go first. What do you think is your best bottom shelf or like something that's sub $25? So uh, my favorite, actually one of my buddies called it earlier. He, he texted me a bunch of odds and he's like, we're going to play bingo while you're on this. So I had to pick a second one. Um, I grabbed two. My, my personal favorite, which everyone will hate because it comes in plastic, is 20 bucks for a handle and it's Ancient Age. Um, Ancient Age is Mashville 2 from Buffalo Trace, as we all know. So Rock Hill Farms blends. I think it's better than blends, um, and everyone will crucify me for it. But uh, I think that you can't go wrong. You can have it neat. You can have it in a glass of water. You can have a glass of ice. You can make it with cocktails. We like it. Uh, we call it RTTR. We put it rocks to the rim. We fill a glass with ice, and we dump a bunch of this in before the Masters kicks off, and you're good to go. That's a good choice. Uh, John, what about you? So I brought two as well. We all talked before here. We were We were a little prepared, but... I think one of the things that gets overlooked, and it's funny that Kerry was just talking about it, but regular old four roses. I know it's an 80 proof, and a lot of people like a little bit higher proof, but this is a sub $20 bottle that I swear has so much flavor 
for like a $15 bottle. I love this thing. It is the Four Roses, formerly known as Yellow Label, now known as Nude Label. <laughs> now, did they say Nude Label or is that is that uh, trademarked via you? I, I am coming up with it right now. <laughs> I love the Nude Label. <laughs> and, and James, then, what, oh yeah, go ahead, oh, John. Oh yeah, that's right. You had a second one. I was going to say, I know you told us to talk about stuff that is readily available. But I just want to give a plug for my little brother, Billy Benders, his favorite whiskey. And it's one of mine. You can only find it in Kentucky. Buy it up before it goes away. JTS Brown. And it's true. It's just one of those things that um, we've seen a lot of those bottom shelfers start going to the wayside now with uh, the Heaven Hill six-year bottle of Bond. So hopefully we can keep a few more down there that keep people uh, happy for those you know, especially for that price point. I mean, that's, I think that's what, like a 15, $18 bottle or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. And it's bottled in bond. So, you know, you learned about that from all the breaking bourbon boys that, you know, all the good things about bottled in bond, it, it's a delicious pour. For sure. And, and James, what about you? I've got a couple. So Evan Williams bottled in bond, probably one of my favorite bottom shells under 20 bucks. Great. And I use his bottle because it ran out. Um, I host a lot of tastings and once people kind of try the nice stuff, I end up breaking that out and that ends up being the community pour. Um, and then the other one I'll end the show with. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Then. I, I guess, I guess we've got something to, uh, Man keep people, yeah, I know. <laughs> keep people on their toes here with it. So let's I'd say let's, he has something in his pants, but none of us are wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> that's, that's the great thing about a virtual conference. We, we have no idea. It's, it's pants are optional today. I made a last minute decision to put them on just in case I had to go grab something. <laughs> I'm sure everybody at home appreciates it. So let's kind of step up a little bit, right? So we talked about some good bottom shelfers. I love those choices because we're hitting a, a few different distilleries there. And there's something that, that it doesn't break the bank. And be honest, like, Jay, I really liked your choice because most people don't know that it's the same exact mash bill that goes into Blanton's and all this other kind of stuff. Um, it's just not aged as long. doesn't come from the same exact warehouse and stuff like that. So just minute differences and all this other kind of stuff. So let's hit the, uh, hit the mid tier here. Something that's like between 25 to $75 and, and James, I'll let you go first. Sure. Oh, rare breed. Absolutely. Yeah. So what the average is like 39 bucks around me online. It looks like it's 45 or so. Blend a barrel proof turkey, six to 12 years old for the majority, sometimes older. When I get limited releases or kind of samples in the mail of everything new to try, that's kind of like my standard to try it up against. Um, and most often it, you know, it'll be, you know, some of those limited editions and releases. And it's something you can walk into the store every day and find on the shelf at a reasonable price. Yeah, that actually happened at a recent blind tasting that Fred Minnick did, uh, put it against a bunch of heavyweight barrel proof bourbons and yes, Rare Breed actually came out on top. Yeah, great notes, like heated caramel, very mild spice, some fruitiness, vanilla, everything you expect out of a nice bourbon. Oh, for sure. And then you also kind of hit another checkbox that we'll kind of talk back later about hitting the barrel proof stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jay, you're up next. All right. My pick, this probably isn't a surprise if you know me. Um, this is the new rebranded Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. Um, says nine years on the label. It's probably older. Some of them, if you do a pick, are up to 15 years old. It's about 45 to 60 bucks. 60% uh, ABV, so almost barrel proof. Not quite there, but you know, close enough. Uh, and they're everywhere, man. You can you can go into gas stations. You can buy this. You can go into Binnie's and buy this. Um, two years ago, I did a whole, we called it the Knob Creek Rodeo. And we tried like 45 different ones of these. Um, and like there was a couple, you know, a couple sleepers, but you know, overall, you know, very competent. You got high proof. You can water it down if you want. You can put it in a cocktail. Um, and when you tell someone about it, you know, your buddy, hey, I found this new bourbon, you know, they're virtually guaranteed to find it. Um, it looks less chintzy than it used to if you like the look of it too. But, you know, I think you can't go wrong. And it's, you know, 45 bucks. You can still get lunch after and hit your $70 cap. Agreed. A great option. And the other thing about the uh, the Knob Creek, you know, I think what was it, a few years ago they started taking off the age statement on it too, didn't they? Uh, it's always been nine, but they they tinkered, they took the nine year off of the small batch for a while, and now it's back. You know, they they kind of took it away, but uh, you know, it, it's at least nine years. So you know, you've got a 
that's a pretty solid age for 60% ABV bourbon. And it's coming out of beam. So you know that, you know, beam quality control is sitting behind it. Now, the other thing you'd mentioned was that Knob Creek Rodeo with, would you say 40 different yeah, versions I think of it? I had, I had three guys join me and they, they did 12 with me. And then I did like 30 more after that. You know, it was like a, a year long thing, but you know. Oh, okay. I thought you said it was like in a, in a, in a, a oh. single sitting you were doing this. I was like, that's a, that's a hell of a rodeo. No, that, that'd be like a week that just disappeared from memory. Um, but, you know, it, the quality control on these used to be terrible, like 2013, 2014, probably to 2016. You know, it was it was verifiable hot garbage. But someone at Beam decided to, you know, you know, we should probably make this good stuff. And they dialed it in. And now, you know, it's solid, just like, you know, another pick I got coming later. And there's even some Knob Creek picks that hit up to the 14 age range, too. Yeah, I, th I know. I know of a couple at least like. uh even uh, Lincoln Road did a 15, 15 and a half year. So, you know, you're for 16 years for 45 bucks. It's crazy. Yeah, it's hard to find those age statements at that price. That's for sure. John, you're sitting there eager. I, I, I can't wait to see what you got for us. I'm always eager. You know this about me. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I'm about to be a little controversial. You know, for all you that don't know, I am a UK grad, but I'm about to go south of the border for this. And biggest sleeper i think is chattanooga 91 and chattanooga 111 i think it's one of the best transitions from mgp to their own distillate ever this is two and a half to three years old but the difference is you have grant mccracken who's their master distiller who came over from sam adams this is a high malt bourbon i think that malt really cuts away from the youth I love it. The best part about it is that they didn't try to gouge on the price. The 91 is 30 bucks and the 111 is 40 bucks. I'm a big fan of that 111 as well. I mean, I ended up getting a bottle of it and it's one of those things that you get a bottle of craft whiskey that, that comes to you and you're just like, Oh no, here we go again. But <laughs> this one, you have a taste of it and you're like, Holy smokes. Like, yes, that malt really shows through and they have an incredible story over there as well. I mean, I, we will have a podcast actually coming out with them in, in the future, but you know, they talked about doing uh, tons and tons of different experiments until they realized what their mash bill was going to be. And I think it, it ended up being what like barrel 91 is what they like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the best part about it is, I don't know if you got this when you got the podcast with them, but the whole brand started, Tim just put out a Facebook post and said, I'm starting Chattanooga whiskey. And everybody said, Oh, where's your whiskey? And he said, Oh crap, I gotta go find some. So <laughs> it was it was one of the best things that they have actually the community got around them. They had to change laws in Tennessee in order to get things going. And just a great story, great people there. But most of all, I mean, I just had to pour some because the whiskey's really good. Yeah. And that's uh that's one that you can find on like sealbox.com and have it delivered because they're not distributed everywhere across the nation yet, but you can you can find it online in a few certain retailers as well. So plug in them already. <laughs> so we'll uh we'll kind of move on to the next one because I know that you know James kind of hit a checkbox here and it's one that I am particularly fond of and that is barrel proof whiskey. Now barrel proof whiskey is just something that as you progress in your like your, your bourbon drinking, uh, I guess you could say like caveman theory, I guess, if you will, right? You kind of start off with bourbon and Coke. So you start removing the Coke when then you get bourbon and ice, then you start drinking it neat and you start drinking it like 80 to 90, maybe 100 proof neat. And then you're like, okay, now I'm drinking 120 proof whiskey neat. So I want to talk about what are some of the best barrel proof bourbons that you can find on the shelf today. So whoever wants to take that one can run with it. I'll go. This one, uh, the Bell Mead cast strength. Now oh, I did yeah. talk with uh, Bell Mead and um, it's not available everywhere yet, but they are running out to basically the last, uh, I guess, 23 markets they need to hit later this year. So it will be everywhere. Um, from what I hear, the batches so far this year are phenomenal. Um, each batch is about a thousand bottles, I think, that come out of it. Blend of seven to 10 year old premium MGP. Um, you know, everybody, seems to be in the bourbon world after some type of MGP. And this one's uh, somewhat readily available and at a good price, 59, I think is uh, retail. At least that's what it is around me. James, and for anybody that's actually watching the stream right now, because we have people that are all over the spectrum of like how well people know whiskey. We say MGP and a lot of yeah. us in this, in this circle know what that means, but explain to people that, that, that don't know who MGP is. It is actually just, you know, uh, 
an amazing distillery in Indiana that produces half the whiskey really on the shelf. Um, so whenever you want to look at the back label, know where it's from, it'll say distilled in Indiana. Typically that means MG there are other distillers in Indiana, but, uh, MGP makes some premium, premium products. Um, and, uh, you know, Bell Mead has been sourcing from them for a while and it's just, uh, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of the story of most, and that's what I think a, a lot of people even get at. Even even a lot of distilleries that are starting up, they have to source somewhere. They have to get some product out. And so MGP is just one of the goliaths in the market that there's always spare barrels that are available, it seems like. And today you can buy some that are around like the three to four or five year range. But, you know, you're going to start seeing, especially some, like you mentioned with Bell Mead, and even like brands that have uh, now ceased to exist, like OKI and some other ones that were really putting out like 12 year, 13 year MGP barrels. We're not really seeing those too much anymore. So it's you and far between nowadays. Oh, but OKI is back. It is as of oh, like I did hear about this that. past <laughs> week. Yes, there was a there was a uh, uh, a press release I saw that, you know, two guys had started reviving the brand. But we'll kind of talk about, <laughs> you know, maybe what the, the what, what, that, what that really means at a later date. And uh, so let's go ahead. We'll kind of move on. So John, you kind of chimed in there. What's your what's your barrel proof sleeper here? So I, I brought two again. First one, I don't want to be stuck south of the border, but Kenny, I'm glad two years later you're finally on this train. You, it took you a while to catch up. We were trying to tell you, but Jack Daniels <laughs> really now, controversial now. It is so controversial. I don't know why this stuff is amazing. It, it I'm is not good. a regular Jack Daniels fan. But Jack Daniels Barrel Proof is something else. It really is. And especially when you get the opportunity to actually go and choose a single barrel there. I was I was amazed when you go there and they roll out, you know, I think it was what, four, four barrels, five barrels, six barrels, something like that for you. You go through and you taste them and they tell you the age and there's literally nothing on the property that's over six years old. And you're like, wait, what? Nothing? I mean, I think it's a lie. Personally, like I, they've got to have something, but they, they claim that there's there's nothing there. And they're just I mean, they're just churning through barrels every single day. And I have to say that the experience, I mean, Kenny, James, I, I don't know, Jay, you probably too. But I mean, we've all been on a lot of barrel picks and picking with Jeff Arnett at at Jack Daniels. I mean, he puts his phone away. You think this guy is making the most whiskey in the whole entire world puts his phone away, sits there, tells you his whole story. If you want to blind different things off, he's like, hey, I'm here for you guys. They don't do as many picks for the Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. So I feel like it's not such a factory when they're churning them out. They really just sit there and say, you have the whole morning. And then you know you could go over to the Squire's house after and, and enjoy some time there. But they really just let you pick the, the barrel you want. And that was awesome. Um, Got to mention, you know, love Russell's Reserve, love Rare Breed, love Knob Creek, love Four Roses, all those different barrel proofs. There are so many good ones out there, but we're talking about sleepers. Everybody knows those. One, and it's not as widely distributed, and, and Kenny, I'm sorry again, but this Pinhook Four Year, and this is going to be part of the vertical that they're doing. They got 1,350 barrels, so they're releasing 150 barrels a year. This one was four years. This upcoming year will be five years. It's MGP, and I think it's really good. Uh, they're also starting to release some of their own stuff too, aren't they? Yeah, the Castle and Key right here. Funny enough, it's right next to me. This is the Castle and Key. It is a uh, two- to three-year Castle and Key that they just put out for Bohemian Bourbon, and they're priced right. I mean, their stuff is priced under 50 bucks right now, which is really, really good. Yeah. And so for anybody that I know that people were lighting it up in the chat earlier when Brian and Howard was speaking about, uh, you know, old Taylor and stuff like that. So yes, the old Taylor distillery, that castle you saw, that is castle and key. That's the distillery that's up and running. And that is the distillery that Pinhook is actually doing is it? I guess it's considered contract distilling is really what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So Jay, what do you got for us? So funny story enough, um, I thought I was going to be alone in this one since we didn't really coordinate. Um, <clears throat> my pick two is Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. Um, I'd have a bottle right here, but I drank it all um, because that seems to be what happens to those things. Um, and to me, it's the new Knob Creek. You know, a couple years ago, you couldn't trust it. You know, you could get a great barrel. You could get one that was just dreadful. Um, 
and whatever they're doing now, they've dialed it in. And, you know, it, it, once again, you can find it wherever you want. The proof is right. The age is right. Like, honestly, I thought it was 10 years, you know, hearing this six year thing has me actually a little bit surprised because, you know, I wouldn't believe it was six years old at all. Um, so that's my pick for best cast strength. I think here it's like 52 bucks, which is just kind of silly, like, you know, great price for it. You know, I'd probably pay 60, 65, you know, if someone told me it was fantastic, I'd pay up to 70, but you know, you know, I, I haven't had a bad one probably in two years. And I, you know, I, I seem to be picking one up every couple months and, uh, you know, Woodbin's a market here always has one, which makes me happy. But, you know, I think that is, that's probably the number one sleeper in terms of, you know, people just want to hate Jack Daniels and, you know, it's kind of hip to hate him and I get it. But, you know, if you have, if you have the black label and then you have the barrel proof, you know, it's just a totally different universe. And I don't think you can get better than that. And you could get three of them for the cost of a BTAC. You know, oh, yeah. For, for what a lot of retailers are putting BTAC out for. I'd take three GT. I mean, I love, love BTAC, but I'd take three of those Jack Daniels barrel proofs over some of the prices you got to pay for some of that other stuff. It's just bonkers. And like, like I said, everyone has one. You know, even I can go to, go to the grocery store and get a Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. You know, uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof is coming out a lot more than it used to, but I can't do that here, you know. So it, it really is the, you know, the crossover of great price. Like, you know, you're going to get a good barrel and they're all, they're all North of 60%. I can't think of a single one I've had under 60%, which is just crazy. So there was a, there was two things that came up in chat and I think we're one of the barrel proof thing. We should probably talk about them and that's Elijah Craig barrel proof as well as stag junior. Now here in Louisville, that's like a needle in a haystack, both of them. Like they, you can't find them like, yeah. So I would, I hardly say that a, they're readily available. Um, and then to call them a sleeper is another thing is I think they're both delicious, but what do you all see in your parts of the world? Yeah. I purposely left out everything Buffalo trace cause you can't find it around here at all in Florida. And I don't think it's a sleeper cause everybody already Everyone knows, knows about, about it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's hardly, hardly a secret. <laughs> you know, I mean, like the biggest sleeper in bourbon, I do have to say, is when Kenny gets Fred Minnick on TikTok. But like besides that, just think of all those videos where he can like change clothes to a song. You got to do it, Kenny. We'll, we'll get on that. We'll make that we'll, we'll make that a part of a whiskey from home uh, after movie. Something like but that. Like that's something you wouldn't expect. Like Stag Jr. is good is something that you would absolutely expect. Mm -hmm. yeah and here in wisconsin you can't find it you know I, yeah. I i have to flex a connection to get stag jr I, I can get elijah craig barrel proof but it's 75 80 bucks and when i look at knob creek or i look at jack daniels you know i'm not reaching for elijah craig unless i've tasted it first like c9 you know c919 was fantastic so i I consider buying that but i'd blind buy jack daniels all day long and kenny i do have one more i need to mention not necessarily a sleeper. A lot of people know about it. Oh, yeah. The 1920 is not necessarily barrel proof, but 115, it's still what I think, you know, even when it came out in 2016, the best bourbon you could walk into a store and actually find. Um, just great flavors, nice amount of heat, still balanced at the proof. Um, I don't know if it's a sleeper, but definitely need to be mentioned. I think it's that's one of those whiskeys that us in the whiskey community, we really know about it. And I get the text message all the time. Somebody will send me a message and it has like the entire Whiskey Row series. And they're like, which one do I get? And I'm always like, you want 1920 if you want something that's like a really good, good like sharp rye taste. If you yeah. want something that's a little bit more mellowed, 1910. Um, yeah. Both of those are, are fantastic, fantastic whiskeys. Love them both. I was it actually like at the store this gotta... morning. With... Oh, God. Oh, sorry. Jay, go. No, I was going to say it. To your point, I was I was literally in the grocery store this morning with 1920 in my hands, and I was like, like, oh, you're so good. And I'm like, everyone knows about you, and I like put it back. And I, was, ah, you know. I think it's a sleeper just because we got to tell people to get it before they decide to up the price. You know, Brown yeah. Foreman isn't going to keep that at 60 forever. Yeah. No, no, they won't. They're going to try to pull the bookers on us again. <laughs> you know, bookers know. went up again. Have you seen the releases for bookers this year? It went up. I mean. I think we'd all put bookers on a list of barrel proof that we like, but as the price goes up and up, I don't know if I'm going to be reaching for it anymore. It's a tough pill to swallow, but it's still solid. I mean, it's a solid, it's usually, you know, a seven to 10 year old blend. So it's, it's tough to say no. And it's always, it's always, by the way, it's always a solid one oh, when you want, when you want to gift it because it comes in that fancy box. Here's something that's nine years 
and half the At price. Least. Yeah. The country ham, game. the country ham from last year, Booker's release, that unbelievable batch. Yeah, biscuits was good too. Hell yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like at 55 bucks, I was buying it all day long. But when they went from six batches a year to four and then said they were going to bump it to 100 bucks, and I mean, I, they walked that back. And so now they're doing 10 bucks every year until I think 2021. You know, to, you know, a lot of people got pretty angry and myself included. I, I was a pretty big Booker's guy. But I mean, that was probably the best thing that could happen to Knob Creek. Like, not, you know, Beam had to be, you know, at least in the Knob Creek division, like people finally buy this, you know, which maybe it was a little bit self-sabotage, but you know, it's here and Booker's isn't. So <laughs> there you go. Your, your credit card statement will be the, the proving power of that one. Oh yeah. So this last question I want to uh, do is it's kind of a fun one because we, we know that there's plenty of limited releases out there and anybody that is watching the stream right now and was, is basically unaware like I was when I first started getting into whiskey and you would just look on a shelf and be like, Oh, this is what's available. No, like there's stuff that is limited editions. There are, it actually says limited editions. There's once a year, one time only kind of a release is something that you're never going to see before. However, there's also some stuff that still ends up sitting on the shelves. Do you all have a limited release that you still see that sits on shelves that people should probably take another second chance or second look at? It's funny. I'm going to go first here. Not I, I wasn't even prepared for this, but I was. <laughs> Jim Beam repeal batch. And, you know, you want to talk about a sleeper bourbon. Yes. Is it 86 proof? Is it 43% ABV? But this is a bottle that is super tasty and it's not something that you would expect from Beam. You know, I think Beam is really, really good at putting out those sub 25 bourbons that are you know one and done like like jim beam distillers cut and then it goes away and you're like hey what happened to this i liked it uh that that's kind of what i feel about repeal batch i like it what about you all any uh, you know jay or james do you have anything yeah, yeah so, um, go ahead oh, you jay. um you, you just keep taking it from me that was my pick <laughs> as well um and maybe we just really like beams so maybe we'd be good friends but yeah did we you just really become um, best friends yes i apparently we did yeah um yeah the repeal that it's it's fine it's everywhere too and no one like and honestly this kind of fits in but you know the budweiser beer that's aged in their copper lager that's aged in jim beam barrels is also fantastic and nobody will buy it um i like the repeal batch a lot especially when you need to like it's like my dinner party bourbon when someone says, come over and like, I know you like whiskey and, you know, so bring some whiskey, you know, and you don't want to bring and leave, you know, something that's 70% ABV or super limited or, you know, you think they might hate. So, you know, the repeal batch is what I bring. Like everyone likes it. Nobody hates it. And, you know, if someone in the crowd knows better, like you can kind of tell when they see it and they're like, okay, you know, this is fine. Um, but yeah, that, that's my pick as well. And for me, it might be a little different in your area, but I can still find, um, Woodford Reserve batch proof on the shelves regularly. And that was a big surprise for me last year for limited editions. Um, obviously it, it commands a premium price point, um, but it ended up in my top five of last year. Um, and they're, they're still on the shelves and uh, can't say I'm the biggest uh, like standard Woodford fan, fan but um, I was really impressed with the batch proof. Yeah, I will say that's, you're actually kind of giving me a, a jog of a memory because I was invited last year to with with Woodford and the Brown Foreman team to actually go to uh, Wednesday at the track before before Derby and you get to go to their suite and of course they've got batch proof available for Maybe. you as much as you want to drink oh, to the cool. day and, and now I'm like I'm really missing it I'm really missing it <laughs> I know, you know happy Derby Day everyone yes absolutely yeah, yes. Yes. And so there's there's also one thing that maybe it, maybe it should give a second chance and one thing that I think is kind of a sleeper sometimes that doesn't get a whole lot of attention and as James kind of mentioned it's also high in price is anything wild turkey whether it's the decades release or anything like that I still see them on shelves decades is fantastic too what gives it's just too expensive i mean which is great when you want it you know that's and that's kind of what 1920 had going for it for a while. Like it was five bucks more than I ever wanted to pay. But when I wanted it, I could always find it because it was just a little bit expensive. And I think Wild Turkey takes that to the next level for better or for worse. You know, if, if you want Corner Store in Decades or even Master's Keeper on here, you know, they can be found. You just got to be willing to, to cry a little bit when the card statement comes at the end of the month. And I think what killed Master's Keep a little bit was the proof. 
and you know decades and cornerstone kind of righted the ship a little bit but those first two masters keep i mean they were fine but when you got the price tag on them and you got the proof somebody's going to want something that is a lower proof to be a little bit of a lower price yep well guys that was fantastic i want to give uh, one more opportunity to plug exactly where people can find you where they can follow you and everything like that uh john since you had wrapped it up go ahead and give yours first so I'm I'm just gonna say for everybody, uh, you could go ahead and find me at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can find me on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us wherever you download your podcast. And uh, thank you for letting us be a part of this. Cheers. Absolutely. I see everybody uh, cracking open some. Looks like you all had something coordinated. So is this uh, what you all choose? Is probably the best sleeper bourbon that's out there. Best sleeper, best budget, best bottom shelfer available that everybody knows about southwest yeah. airlines thank you for carrying it <laughs> <laughs> fantastic uh james go ahead and plug where people could find you as well so yeah you can find me mainly on instagram facebook at bourbon enthusiast for news reviews uh the latest releases um and then you can also check me out on patreon for the private barrel club um for beside behind the scenes action and access to uh you know a lot of uh ink picks all right and jay Hey, yeah, so you can find me. I'm at take.review, um, T-8-K-E dot review. Um, I'm on online. You can get a review every day. I'm on Instagram. Um, and if you're on Reddit, stop by our bourbon, you know, our scotch, our whiskey pour, and all that kind of stuff. Um, say hey. I'm a moderator there. You can jump in my inbox, read the sidebar, please. Um, yeah, and we look forward to having you. But, uh, yeah, drop by the website. I'm always taking, you know, feedback if you want to request something. So drop on by and tell me what you think. Awesome. Well, cheers, guys. Thank you for being a part of this, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers, yeah. guys. Cheers. cheers.